All right, I'm in the basement of my house, and today I want to add an automatic shutoff to the water supply valve. That's that valve with the yellow handle there. A um, couple reasons why I want to do this. Now, I told my insurance company I had one, so I got a discount, and they need proof. So it wasn't quite a fib because I knew I was going to add it, and really the real reason is peace of mind. Just... Peace of mind that if there's a leak in the house, that that valve will shut off and stop the supply of water. Um, I don't want it to have to rely on me. What if I'm not home? What if we're sleeping? Who knows? I want a system that's monitoring and can automatically shut that off if needed. So let's take a look at the installation and how this works. All right, so here's what I got, right? This is all the equipment that needs to be installed, and you'll see, very easy, straightforward. This whole thing is probably a little over 200 bucks all in. Um, there was some Black Friday deal, but honestly, you can see sales on this stuff throughout the year. So, um, I mean, the, the entry cost is super low, and think about if this prevents water damage in your house, how much it can save you. The other thing is just by installing this, I'm going to save $300 on my homeowner's insurance. So there's a compelling reason to put this into your house or, or even something comparable, if not this. But this is a, a great do-it-yourself type of system. So let's take a look. All right. So first off, we have the actuator for the valve. So this basically goes over the ball valve and it's the motor that's going to turn it on and off. It's just gonna spin the valve. Comes with some hose clamps and some installation hardware, so we'll figure that out. Now, this is the power supply for the motor, and you can use this with batteries, which is great, right? Because if you have severe weather, you lose your power, you still wanna be able to shut this thing off and I'll show you how that can actually work even without internet connection. So here's your power supply. There's also um, an AC power supply that plugs in. So it'll be using AC primarily, and then um, it'll have battery backup. Okay, so that's that stuff. These are the sensors. So you can, you're gonna buy these separately, but in this case, I bought a, a package of four sensors. This is a hub that goes on your uh, home network. So basically you just plug ethernet, plug it into your router, it sits there. This communicates with the hub. These things will detect water, whether it pools up underneath or it drips down on top. Um, they work really well. Um, so you can get as many of these as you want. Uh, you could put them in every bathroom. You could just go nuts with it. Now here's the other thing. Once you have everything set up, with the app, I can remotely turn the valve on and off with the app manually just by pushing a button in the app, and that'll turn the valve. Now, the other thing is you can link these sensors to the valve. In that case, I don't have to do a thing. If this detects water, it sends a signal to the valve, and it turns it off. And when you set that up, it doesn't even use your wireless network. So if you have no power, this is going to commu communicate directly to the valve and tell the valve to shut off. So it's just a great system. So anyway, let's get to the install. All right, so here's the tools that Yolink says that I need to install this. So that's... Pretty ambitious, but let's see. Okay, I just had the air handler kick on, so hopefully you can hear me. But um, I'm gonna hold this with my left hand because of course I don't have the tripod with me. But the first thing we need to do is remove the handle off of the ball valve. I don't want to strip this thing. It's on there pretty good. Let me stand up and give it some torque. All 
All right, so you have the nut off now, the handle just slides off. All right, so that's the first step. All right, with the handle off, I just wanna point out, you can see this shaft. It looks like it's round, but it actually has two flats. It has a flat on this side and a flat on that side. So what we need to do is we're gonna slip this adapter over it, and you can see these two screws catch the flat, and then tighten the screws, okay? So let me do that off camera, because again, I can't hold it, but we'll be back in a second. All right, here it is attached to the shaft. Simple. All right, so here we are with the actuator. You can see that the adapter is gonna slide into this hole here, and the whole thing just slides on, okay? And then these arms will go onto the pipe and then be held by the hose clamps. Okay, so here it is with the hose clamps on. I've just got to secure this uh, ground wire, but simple as that. Look at it, it's simple. Um, I mean, what am I into this job for? 15 minutes? Like, uh, this is a no brainer. Everybody should do this. Okay, we have the actuator installed, so now we want to put the controller and plug that into the actuator. This powers the actuator. But here's the thing. This communicates with the hub that's on your home network. So really, I think I'm going to install the hub first. Put the hub on the, on the home network, then we can discover this once we have it connected, and then use the app to control the actuator. So right now we're gonna take this and we're gonna put this on our router and you can see it just uses a hard wire ethernet and um, a USB-C power connector. Simple as that, let's go do it. Okay, here's the Yolink hub, uh, USB-C power, they give you all that. And uh, I just need to make an ethernet connection to my router. Now in my case, I've got a mesh network. So I have like three of these aero devices in the house. So I just picked one here for now, and I just want to put it here, get everything up and running, and then I'll probably tuck it away someplace in a more permanent location. But um, basically, Ethernet from there to here, and then we're going to set up the app. Okay, plugged in and powered up, and let's go to the app. Okay, the hub is powered on. We downloaded the Yolink app. You set up a home, you kind of get prompted for that when you first start the app. So now we've got that set up, but there are no devices yet, right? So we want to start adding devices. If you see here, please tap this square. I tap that. Access the camera. Sure. We're going to go to the barcode of the hub. Or the QR code. Okay, come on. There it goes. Bind device. Sure. Okay, so we have the hub now on the network. So let's go back to the controller. Okay, so we want to put batteries in this, and we've got four screws here. And unfortunately, Yolink has not given us free batteries. So let's go find some batteries and do that. All right, so I removed the screws, went to get the batteries, but look, what? It comes with batteries and they're already connected. So I don't have to do anything like pull a tab. So let's put everything back together. Okay, so we're gonna add the controller now. So we've got the QR code ready to go. Hit add device. Oh, wow. Found it really fast. There you see Yolink valve, bind device. This device is offline. Press set button once. If the device is battery supplies, supplied, it will join the internet automatic in 20 seconds. So let's do that. Okay, I just hit the set button. You saw it populate this. It wasn't connected, it's now connected. 
and that slide switch there would activate the uh, valve one way or the other once it's connected. So let's go connect the controller and test this thing out. Just want to show you this is the set button. That's what I tapped when I was in the app. All right, so we're back at the actuator. I just want to show you this cable is going to connect to the controller, all right? But the controller does have to be mounted somewhere and they give you some anchors and things, but I don't have an easy, convenient place. Now I could just tie wrap it, right? Like there's lots of places I could just tie wrap it and just let it hang. Um, but I just did some plaster work and I have a masonry bit and drill. It's kind of all queued up, ready to go. I'm just gonna make a hole here, put an anchor and just mount it close by. Um, so that kind of goes beyond the scope of the Phillips head and the adjustable wrench, but whatever. You guys can do what you want. All right, controller's mounted, and I just need to make my connection here. Um, just realize this is keyed, so it's only going to go in one way. All right, let me do that. Uh, I need two hands, and then we're going to test this thing out. All right, here it is with the controller connected. Um, now, this is for AC if you want to have it plugged in. Uh, I'm just going to use the batteries. Um, the batteries last a very long time. You can look online. And um, the other thing is, you know, typically you're going to be in an emergency situation. You may not have power. So just be diligent. Like, keep the batteries fresh. You know, check it every year and a half, two years. You can check on the app whether everything's okay, uh, test it out periodically, so you should be fine. So, um, all right, so next thing to do is let's test it out. Okay, guys, I'm back at the app because I realized, because I'm filming this on my iPhone, I don't have my GoPro today, um, I can't show you the valve turning while I hit the button. So the best I can do is let's slide this switch and you can listen to the motor spin. And I'll show you the valve handle. It's turning into the closed position. And let's come back to that now. Okay, and here is the handle now off. The water is off. Uh, I believe O is for open, S for shut off. Um, but let me go into the app. I'm gonna open the valve, and this time I'll come back to video so you can see it move. Okay, so I just hit the button. Now this is opening. Very cool. So the only thing left now is to All right, so here's the water sensor. It's got another barcode and it's got a set button, just like the hub. So this should be the same method. So let's go back in the app. All right, so we're in the app and we want to add another device. So we go back to that square. It finds it so fast. Leak sensor, bind. And now this is added. Now let's hit the set button. I'm doing it three, two, one. Let's see. Bam, there it is. Okay, so I have the sensor here, so everything's in the same shot. So everything's connected to the internet. You can go into the app and you can set up all sorts of routines where if the sensor sees water, then turn off the valve, uh, send an email, send a text, push notification. Um, you can have it tied to other devices like sound a, an alarm, uh, turn on a siren. You can have it do all sorts of things. So there's a lot of functionality in the app if you spend time and you wanna set something like that up. Um, but here's the thing, what if you have no power and you, you don't have internet access? What if you lose that? So what I wanna do is I wanna pair directly this leak sensor to the controller. That way it doesn't matter whether I'm online or not. This leak sensor is gonna tell 
the control to turn the water off if it senses water. So let's do that now. Okay, so what we wanna do is put the valve in the position that we desire if this sees water. And so what do we want? We want it off, right? Right now it's open, so to turn it off, I'm just gonna hit the set button on the controller. We're gonna get it in the off position and then we're gonna pair these two. Okay, we wanna hold this set button for about five to 10 seconds until it flashes green. So let's do that. There's green. Now we go to our controller. So you start with the sensor, then you go to the controller. We're gonna do the same thing, five to 10 seconds. Okay, I believe they are paired. So both of the blinking green lights went off and now we're gonna test this. All right, so we wanna test it, but first we need to open the water as if the water is on and everything is normal. So let's go back to the set button on the controller and we'll wait for that to open fully. Then we're gonna test the leak sensor. All right, so we're gonna test it out. Uh, just again, I'm gonna show you, these contacts on top are pretty much a drip sensor. So if water drips down on it, it'll pool up and make a contact between those two points and that'll send the command out. It also has contacts below. So if it's sitting there and water is pooling up behind it and it's in a puddle, it'll also do the same thing. All right, so let's go. We've got water, let's just pour it in here. There it goes, simple as that. And you can put as many of these you, as you want throughout the house. What a great thing. And I got a notification, leak sensor detected water. So there you go, let's come back and summarize uh, this video. Okay, so to conclude this video, you guys saw how easy and straightforward this installation was. Um, I think a lot of you could find uh, a real reason to have this type of device on your water supply. Um, I think we all know somebody or have had firsthand experiences with leaks in the house and you really need to shut the water off fast and this thing will be in the background monitoring and be able to shut the water off whether I'm here or not, whether I have electricity in the home or not. So it's really a valuable um, device in my mind. So anyway, hope this helps and good luck.